we're going to start our story time. Do you guys want to start our story time? Yeah. I need more excitement than that. No story time? You guys just want to skip and go straight to the craft? Yeah. <laughs> now, alhamdulillah, you guys have learned so much about Hajj that after Hajj, what happens? It's Eid. So our story time, because we won't be together next week, is all about Eid. I read that Who knows what this Eid is called? Eid al-Adha. Why do you guys think it's called Eid al-Adha? We just talked. Hmm? I want to call on someone who's raising their hand. Hmm? Yes. Excellent, excellent answer. Because it's the, the Eid that we slaughter an animal to remind us about the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Good. So today I'm going to read a book. I'm going to read two books, inshallah. This is the first book. It's called Peg and Cat, the Eid al-Adha Adventure. So what I do for anybody who's new here is I will read the book, but then I will make sure to show the page to everyone. So if you're sitting kind of far, I'll try and do a little bit high, but everyone should get a turn to see the page. So if you can't see it when I'm reading it, don't worry, inshallah, I will make sure to share it with you all. I mean, sit down. Thank you. All right. So the first book, Peg and Cat, The Eid Al-Adha Adventure, by Jennifer Oxley and Billy Aronson. Can I put it on the floor? Can I put it on the floor? Okay. Thank you. Kind of talk. Sorry. All right. Bismillah. Peg and Kat were visiting their friends, Yasmina and Amir, during a very special holiday. Whoops. It was Eid al-Adha, a holiday Yasmina and Amir celebrated every year. Peg and Kat had never even heard of Eid al-Adha until Yasmina and Amir invited them to the celebration to check it out. We're going to make your first Eid al-Adha the best ever, said Yasmina. Let's rock out, said Amir. They, sa they sang, Amir here and Yasmina the Mashina, rocking the house just like rocking the arena. Got my new tie and jacket, sang Amir. Got my best hijab, said Yasmina. Got my suit, Kat said, has a scarf on, sang Peg. I'm no slob, sang Kat. This is actually a cartoon show, too. You can watch the episode. It's on PBS Kids, yeah. Eid al-Adha is really fun, said Yasmina. There are presents and lots of food. But mostly, said Amir, it's about giving to those with less. I like the presents and food, said Kat. But giving stuff away? How is that fun? You'll see, said Amir. Peg drew pictures of plates with food on them to remind Kat what Eid al-Adha is really about. This sign means less, she said. This one means more than. I like the more sign better, said Kat. Amir played his stringed instrument called an oud. Yasmina played her electric guitar. Peg and Kat played ukulele and drums as their hosts sang about the holiday. Eid Mubarak means happy holiday, so we say Eid Mubarak as we celebrate. On Eid al-Adha, even Kat is going to see how awesome giving can be. We'll see if I see, said Kat. Don't go to Eid al-Adha. It was 
is time to go to the celebration. Every year we bring this silver tray, Yasmina explained, filled with almonds, olives, apricots, and I love apricots, said Peg. Then let's add more, said Yasmina. Are those honey cakes? Cat asked. Should we? Yasmina added. More, said Cat. More, more, more. Do you think Cat likes the honey cakes? Yeah. I think so too. Too greedy. Too greedy. You don't. One important tradition, said Amir, is dividing the meat into three equal parts. When you have three equal parts of something, each part is a third, said Peg. We keep one third, we give one third to our neighbors, and we give one third to share to, with someone with less. Less what, asked Kat. Well, food or clothes, the basic stuff, that everyone needs, said Peg. Amir divided the meatballs into three parts. Um, the three bowls all have different amounts of meat, Amir, said Peg. But I put the same number of meatballs in each bowl, said Amir. But the meatballs are different sizes, though. If we don't divide the meat into three equals parts, this won't be the best Eid al-Adha ever. We've got a big problem. Peg noticed Cat playing with a pair of small swinging pans. That's it, she said. The pan balance. Do you guys think you could help them with their problem? It's not a problem. It's not a problem? Why, why is it not a problem? But there's two, two, and two, so isn't that fair? No. Why is that not fair? Because this one has tiny meatballs and this one has humongous meatballs? But it's the same amount. But they don't have the same amount of meat in each. Okay. Let's see what they do. Peg put one pair of bowls on the pan balance. This pan goes down because the bowl on it has more meat. It's heavier, she said. But we can take from more and give to less, said Amir, until the pans are the same level, said Yasmina. The meat in the bowls weigh the same. How do we know they weigh the same? What's it showing us? Equal. An equal sign. The, uh, Peg replaced one bowl on the balance with the third bowl. Those weighs the same too. They all weigh the same. Problem solved. Eid Mubarak, said Kat. The end. Oh, not, not the end. I wanted to see if you were paying attention. The group headed out for the party, but first they had to drop off a third of the meat to someone with less. We've come to the soup kitchen because the people who eat here have less, said Yasmina. At the soup kitchen, they can each get a good free meal. As the door to the soup kitchen opened, Amir said, it's run by Ramon, said Peg. Kat took the bowl from Kat Peg and handed it to Ramon. We hate to run and eat, but we have a party to go to, he said. Oh. I almost didn't show you guys the picture. It's behind the oh. line. Wait, said Ramon. I really need your help with a really big problem. <laughs> There's a man who lives in that building across the yard. He's always comes here for meals, but today he hasn't come. I wonder if he's sick or if those crates of canned food uh, that were just delivered are blocking his way. Oh no, they have another really big problem. Let's see what they do. Can he order takeout? asked Kat. 
No, said Peg. Today's about giving. We're going to give. We'll cross the yard with the meatballs. The crates were piled so high, Cat wondered how they would ever get past them. Let's count the crates uh, uh, to find the piles with less, said Yasmina. They'll be easier to step over. So what is their solution? What are they going to try and do? Yeah, so they're going to count the crates to see which ones have less to see if those would be easier to step over. They stepped across a pile that had only one crate and another pile of two crates. One is less than six, said Peg, and ten is more than two, said Cat. But there were even more crates to get past. Yasmina and Amir were totally freaking out. Cat held up his paws. Cat's right, said Peg. You should count backwards till you calm down. We'll count from seven, said Yasmina. We like seven. Seven days of the week, seven colors of the rainbow. What else has seven? What did we learn today? We do seven times. Seven stones for Jamarat. Seven times around the Kaaba. Seven times Tawaf around the Kaaba. Good. Seven times is seven Marwa, mashallah. So let's all count down from seven. Can you guys count down with me? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Thank you, guys. As they counted, Cat gazed at those juicy meatballs. He was about to take a bite when Peg shouted, that's it. That's it? That's it, you meatball-loving cat. We'll divide the crates in two thirds, just like we did with the meatballs. That'll be easier to move. Problem solved. So they're gonna make the big crates smaller. When Peg knocked on the door, she heard a familiar voice invite them in. Mac, asked Peg. I've had some bad luck, Mac explained. La uh, I usually go to Ramon's soup kitchen for food. Last night I stubbed my toe, and this morning I stubbed another toe. I'm not going any place. You don't have to, said Yasmina. We brought you meatballs. Mac was so hungry that he ate the meatballs quickly. And then for dessert, Amir and Peg offered him olives and apricots. Cat wanted to keep the honey cakes for himself. But he remembered that Eid al-Adha is about giving to those with less. So he took the tray over to Mac. Would you like a honey cake? Asked, Kat asked. I love honey cakes, said Mac. Cat gasped. Hey, giving does feel good. You're all so nice, said Mac. I don't know what to say. I do, said Peg. Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak. The end. <laughs> MashaAllah. That was a very nice lesson for Peg and Kat to learn about Eid Al-Adha. What do you guys think? So what did we teach? What did they teach uh, Peg and Kat? What did they teach them? That um, Eid Al-Adha is more special than Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> what should we do with our meat on Eid Al-Adha? How should we do it? How should we divide our meat on Eid Al-Adha? So we talk all day. Okay. One, two, three. Bismillah. Good. So we learned in Hajj that we slaughter a sheep or a goat or a camel, right? One of those animals. So now what do we do with the meat? What do we learn from Peg and Cat that we do with the meat? Divide it into three parts. We divide it into three parts. Do we keep all three parts? No. We keep it all? I don't know about that. That would be greedy. What should we do with the three parts that we, that we do? 
Good. We give one third to our neighbors, one third to those who have less, and then we keep one third for ourselves. Alhamdulillah. All right, mashallah. Do you guys want to do one more book? No. Like seriously, no? Yes, do it. <laughs> Let's do one more book. One more book, mashallah, and then we'll go to the craft. I think you guys can handle it. <laughs> Sit down. Okay. Sit down, please. All right, we're gonna do one more book, mashallah, for all you amazing listeners. But don't worry, inshallah. After this, we're gonna do our deep cupcake cake. Okay. All right. Can everyone stand up and get some shaking out? Everyone, stand up and let's shake just a little bit. Shake out. Can I go keep the shake? Huh? Shake, shake. You're not shaking. Shake it. Shake, shake, shake some of that energy out. MashaAllah. All right, now a big stretch, a big stretch. A big stretch. And then back in your spots. MashaAllah. Trust me, after sitting all this time, you're really going to have, you know, get really excited to go eat some of those cupcakes. Right? I mean, after you decorate them, what's going to happen? You get to take them home to eat them. All right, let's go. You guys ready? This is called The Best Eid Ever. And this is by Esma Mubin Udin. Are you guys ready? But what, what do I say before I start a book? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. All right. Anissa sat in her bed, looking out the window. Her parents were away at the Hajj pilgrimage, and she missed them. Saudi Arabia was so far from her home in America. She thought about last Eid's holiday when she had worn her shalwar kameez with flowery orange henna designs on her hands. Daddy had said she looked just like a princess. Mommy had left her eat, let her eat candy for breakfast. They all went to Eid prayers together and then visited friends all day. But today, the house was quiet. Just then, Anissa's grandmother bustled into the room. Can't see? So it sounds like her aid this year is gonna be very different than last year. We'll see, maybe it'll be worse, maybe it'll be better, we'll see. Anissa, happy Eid, Nani sat on the bed and greeted her granddaughter, with, her granddaughter with a big hug and kiss. Time to get ready for prayers. Anissa returned the hug and then slumped back onto bed. Why the sad face, my dear? Nani gently brushed the hair out of Anissa's eyes. Do you miss Mama and Baba? Anissa nodded. She felt like she might cry. I know it's hard without your parents here, Nani said, but please don't be sad. Today of all days, we'll have fun together, just you and me, okay? Anissa tried to smile. She didn't want her grandmother to feel bad. Okay, she said, as Nani stood up and walked over to the closet. Now, I have a surprise for you. Nani lifted up a blanket on the closet shelf and pulled out a gift wrapped box that had been hidden underneath. Do you guys see the gift box that was hidden underneath? What color is it? What color is the gift box? What color is the gift box? Red. It's red? Yellow. The gift box. Uh, oh, purple. Purple and red. Purple I guess it kind of looks red. To me, it looks like pink. Right? <laughs> we'll say reddish pink with a purple ribbon. We're going to read. Anissa pulled the ribbon off the box and opened it. Her eyes lit up as she saw the beautiful Eid clothes from Pakistan. Pulling out the kurta on top, she ran her fingers over the soft, shimmering fabric and its gold embroidery and shiny sequins. Purple and gold bangles clinked together 
as Nani unwrapped them. Handmade Pakistani shoes, tucked in tissue paper, still lay in the box. Nani, I love my new Eid clothes. How did you know that purple was my favorite color? Thank you. Anissa hugged her grandmother. I can't wait to get dressed. There's still more, Nani said, smiling, as she pulled a bright red shalwal kameez and a silky yellow gharaha uh, out of the box. Each outfit had matching bangles and shoes. There are three sets of Eid clothes, one for each day of the three days of Eid. Which one do you want to wear for prayers this morning? Which one do you think she's going to pick? The purple one, yes, because purple's her favorite color. The purple one. Nani smiled. It will look beautiful on you. I'll iron it while you're getting ready. But first, I have to stir the lamb kurma. Mm, that sounds yummy. We'll see. Okay. Lamb kurma. Anissa jumped out of bed and ran to the kitchen. The aroma of her favorite dinner, cooking on the stove, made her mouth water. Please, can I taste some? Nani scooped out a spoonful of bubbling lamb curry, blew on it, made sure it wasn't too hot, and then gave Anissa a taste. Anissa savored the salty, spicy curry in her mouth. Yum, it's good. I'm glad you like it. Now let's hurry and get ready so we're not late for the prayers. Mmm, that sounds good. I'm kind of hungry. What about you guys? Does that sound good? I've tried it before and I did not. You didn't like it? Sometimes we like something when we try it. Sometimes we don't. It's very important we always try something, right? So you never know. At the prayer hall, the imam gave a sermon about the Hajj pilgrimage. Anissa had a hard time paying attention because she kept thinking about her parents and wishing they were there. After the sermon ended, the women and children in the women's section of the prayer hall folded their prayer rugs and greeted each other. Anissa hugged so many people. The donuts on the back tables were quickly finished. Is there usually donuts when you guys go to the masjid on Eid? No? When we, it, we came from Tampa, Florida, and every Eid we go, it's covered in donuts everywhere. So it's something that we remember. Even on the prayer hall? Outside the prayer hall. We don't want to make a mess in the prayer hall, right? I do, because then you can eat when you're in the Anissa noticed two young girls standing alone, watching the excitement around them. The older girl's hijab, do you guys know what the hijab is? Yeah, it's a thing uh, Exactly. The scarf we wear in our head, yeah. The older girl's hijab was torn. The younger girl's dress fell almost to the floor, and she kept her arms bent so her sleeves wouldn't slip down over her hands. Anissa walked over to them. Why didn't you wear your eight clothes today, she asked. The older girl stared shyly at the floor. Seeing that her sister was not going to answer, the younger girl blurted out, We don't have no clothes this Eid. We have to leave all our stuff and run away because our fire burned down. The older girl turned towards her sister, Maryam, we have to be thankful the war can't get us now. We are safe and we are together. Papa says Allah will give us whatever we need. I wish Baba was here with us now. But ever since we came to America, he always has to work, Maryam told Anissa. He even had to work on her Eid. But later he's going to bring Zainab and me candy, and we're going to go to the masjid together for the afternoon prayers. You see? Before Anissa could say anything, Auntie Selma pulled her into a big bear hug. Anissa, Betty, Eid Mubarak, my dear, happy Eid. You look so pretty, mashallah, God, uh, as God has willed. You and your nanny come and visit me today, okay? Anissa was swept up by other aunties and friends and hugs and kisses and greetings. 
While hugging Auntie Barak, Anissa saw Maryam pick up a piece of donut off the floor. The girl looked around quickly, and then she put the donut piece into her mouth and licked the sweet glaze from her fingers. Why do you think she took it off the floor? Because no one ate it. Maybe she was really hungry and there wasn't any more. Or maybe she didn't get to eat any Maybe. That's a good reason that we shouldn't take too much, right? Even when we have a lot of something, we should only take one or two so that we can make sure everyone gets some, right? Yes. As people were leaving the prayer hall, Anissa kept looking back at the girls. Finally, she let go of Nanny's hand and went back over to them. She didn't know what to say, but she couldn't leave them without talking to them again. Hesitantly, she asked them, maybe we could play sometime together. Instantly, Mediam's face lit up. Sure, she said, uh, with a flashing bright smile. Zainab continued to look at the floor. Where, um, where do you live now? Anissa asked. In the apartments by the mosque, Mediam answered. Zainab lifted her head to look at Anissa. A small, shy smile crossed her face in number 63. A motherly woman ushered her three children and Zainab and Mediam out of the prayer hall. At home, that afternoon, while Nanny was heating up the food for dinner, Anissa told her about the girl she had met. Nanny listened quietly. Sometimes when, family leave their home, leave, when families leave their home because of war or other bad problems, they have to leave everything they have behind, Nanny told her. Many families have come to America as refugees, looking for a safe, good place for their children to live and grow up. Does Allah help these families? Of course, my dear, Allah helps everyone. Nani was stirring the curry, but sometimes not in the way you might think. He might send good people to help them through bad times. Meanwhile, the families have to work hard and trust that Allah helps, Allah's help is always near. Nani opened the, open, opened the oven door to check on the roti. Do you remember the story of Prophet Ibrahim, his wife Hajar, and their baby Ismail? Anissa nodded. Mommy and Daddy had told her that many of the lessons of Hajj pilgrimage were based on this story. Prophet Ibrahim's family trusted in Allah, even in very difficult times, and Allah always took care of them. Nani and Anissa said a prayer for Zainab and Maryam's family. Then Anissa told Nani about a plan she had made. So Anissa made a plan. Do you guys want to see what Anissa's plan is? No. Yes. Later that afternoon, as shadows lengthened across the city, Muslim families were leaving the masjid after the prayer of Asad prayer. Anissa, sit quietly. Anissa, sit quietly. Someone will hear you. Nani whispered to her granddaughter as they crouched behind the bushes outside the apartment building next to the mosque. Here they come. Duck down. Through the leaves, they saw the two girls and a man stop in front of the decorated baskets near, neatly arranged on the crack stoop in front of their door. What's this? In surprise, the man read the attached card. Happy Eid to Maryam, Zainab, and their papa. Anissa felt as if she must, might burst with excitement. Would they like the presents? Zainab and Maryam opened the basket. Wow! Beautiful, uh, beautiful clothes. Look at the sparkles on this yellow shirt. I can't believe this, the man said softly. Lamb and chicken, rice and vegetables, even desserts and candy. Who could have left all this? Papa, help us carry the baskets inside. Medium was trying to drag a basket across the sidewalk. Put them down, girls, the father commanded. We don't take charity. Let's see what happens. Their father paused. Then, uh, then Maryam asked softly, but can I keep the yellow clothes? I love yellow. And, and what about the sparkly bangles? No, my dears, the father spoke again. You know that a Muslim does not beg from others. But, 
But Papa, we didn't ask for them, Santa pointed out. Papa didn't budge. I will provide for my family. There are other people who need this food and these clothes more than we do. Now let's go. Can, can I just eat this cookie right now? Anissa could hardly breathe. What if the, they didn't take the gifts? As she leaned forward to see better, a twig snapped and she fell down um, and she ducked down. What's, what was that noise, the father asked as he turned around to face the bushes. Anissa and Nani ducked as his heavy footsteps approached their hiding space. Are they gonna be found? Yeah. Let's find out. Well, I hope they are. <laughs> I want them to have it. Through the leaves, Anissa could see the man's stern, stern features and firmly set chin coming towards them. Hidden behind thick eyebrows were soft, gentle eyes. In these eyes, Anissa recognized the same look of tenderness she often saw in her own father's face. Anissa and the man looked at each other for a long moment. Then, abruptly, he turned around and walked back to his daughters. What do you think is going to happen? They're allowed to take it. <laughs> he knelt on one knee and opened his arms. The girls wrapped their arms around him, and Medium climbed onto his knee. Papa, there's more food here than we need, she said, small fingers gently touching his cheek. Why don't we share it with the neighbors? And please, can we keep their eat clothes, please? As Zana. Anissa saw the man's face soften as he drew his daughters close to him. As he hugged them, he nodded, and he smiled at Anissa and Nani. <laughs> After Anissa and Nani returned home, Nani picked up the phone and dialed, Hello, I'd like a medium vegetable pizza, please, for delivery. She hung up and shook her head. Eating pizza on Eid? My dear child, I have never had an Eid like this one. Me either, Anissa said. I can't wait to tell Mommy and Daddy all about it. Later in the evening, as Anissa and Nani snuggled up on the couch and ate pizza for dinner, they both agreed this has been the best read ever. Yay! Alhamdulillah! Inshallah, I am very, very, very impressed with all of you guys. You made it through a puppet show through a hedge adventure and two stories. You guys, give yourself a round of applause, mashallah. Now are you guys ready and excited to do the cake decorating? Yeah. Yes! All right, let me show you what it looks like again. Bismillah. I'm here to help. You wanna see it? You guys wanna see it? And okay. your parents should have the cupcake boxes with all the, the, the supplies. <laughs> the rest are on the table, and me and the volunteers will help you if you guys need any help. But parents, there's a video tutorial that gives step-by-step. Step. There's a video YouTube uh, tutorial. You can watch step-by-step, step, and then we'll have the sample over there for you guys to see. But the video shows step-by-step. Step. It's very simple, and I'm going to be there to help you as well. So I'm going to meet you guys all in the back. You can get set up at the table.